AJAX as a way of asynchronously making HTTP requests. Uh, that way we can update our page dynamically rather than simply every time that uh, rather than refreshing the page to refresh the content. <clears throat> We're going to, uh, Ajax is typically, at least these days, used in conjunction with REST APIs. So REST is a way of doing um, a, basically an API over the web using HTTP as sort of the delivery method. Uh, I'll, I'll explain this in more detail later. Um, for now, I have this example of a to-do app. I want to display, you know, to-do items here, and um, well, it, when someone types in here, but I'm going to do this functionality later. Right now, I just want to go out and retrieve the existing to-do items from the web server, <clears throat> which is which means that data is ultimately saved in a database. Um, this allows us to, well, say maybe multiple people can use the same to-do list. And as they update things, I could, you know, turn around and make these requests and just continue to update the data here without having to update the whole page. Uh, you can think just like, you know, Gmail, for example, you can send and receive emails, but you don't have to refresh the page each time. You just kind of click around and, and uh, do things. But behind the scenes is making uh, Ajax requests. So this is my page. I'm going to add things here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to make a call to this URL. So this is an example of a get request to a REST API. Uh, I have my example user here of aptly named example user. And <clears throat> here are the to-do items associated with that user. So there's some code behind the scenes which goes and fetches this data out of a database. It then takes that data and formats it as JSON. So one thing that the think uh, kind of realize here is this is just a sort of plain URL to uh, you know and uh, we're making an HTTP request here and getting data back that data could be in JSON format or it could be in HTML format so that's why okay we get HTML data here the browser knows to render that you know visually over here it just kind of lists out the payload um, <clears throat> so JSON data uh, it's, it's really just a string, so you just get this sort of raw data back. The string just happens to have formatting, which corresponds to um, JavaScript objects, hence JavaScript object notation, i.e. JSON. Um, <clears throat> so here we have these square brackets. That denotes, okay, this is going to be a list. Each item in the list is going to be an object. I've happened to find four properties here, an ID, a create a date, to do text, so that's just a description of the to do item, and this boolean for true or false, uh, I mean for completed. <clears throat> My whole goal is just use JavaScript to request this URL, get this data, convert that to actual JavaScript objects, and then uh, retrieve out just this field and display it over here. So I want both those uh, to do items here to be displayed here <clears throat> on the page. I'm going to load this data. Um, I'm going to make the request when the page is done loading. It's sort of an easy mistake is to have JavaScript run, but actually the body of the page hasn't been loaded yet. So you're trying to add, say, list items to a list that hasn't been added to the page. It's, it's basically a race condition. So I'm going to avoid that by using a JavaScript event. So on load, I'm going to call function I'll get to do's. Now let's look up at the JavaScript I already have defined. You don't need to worry about this whole function for this video. I'm going to use that for the um, for when I'm adding to the page here via this button. Um, I am going to use, however, um, this function um, <clears throat> show to do. All it does is it takes a string, it looks up this nicely, uh, you know, sage green colored box and drops in whatever string there is there as a list item. So my whole goal is to request, you know, this URL, get this data back and drop it in as list items over here via this show to do function. <clears throat> so now I need to add um, my get 
to do's function here. <clears throat> so this is going to make an Ajax request to this REST API. REST is nice because it's very simple. So really I'm just requesting this URL and getting this data back. Right. <clears throat> so the first thing I always advocate on doing is drop in a console.log. Um, because let's face the facts, JavaScript is really brittle. It always breaks. Um, throwing this in here will just save you a lot of trouble. So now when I refresh the page, it kicks off this get to do's. Um, yeah, it does seem a little maybe futile that I'm just doing this on load, but remember I could set up a timer and just kind of periodically load in the to-do data if I wanted to. Right now on load, I'm just request, make, going to make a request here. Uh, again, I see loading to-dos pop up here, so that means oh, all the pieces are working. So now let's proceed into the actual Ajax. So there's, a, there's three steps. We're going to um, <clears throat> prepare the request. So there's a few uh, bits of that that's like specifying the URL, and whatever else. I'm gonna uh, set the callback and then make the request. So those would be the three steps. The first one, um, <clears throat> well, let's first make the variable. Um, now this is an unfortunately named class <laughs> XML <laughs> HDB request. Years ago, they thought XML was going to take over the world and be, you know, the way of exchanging data. Uh, it turns out everyone hates XML, and uh, it's really fallen out of favor. <laughs> but this object, is, or this class rather, is uh, named this because they thought, oh, instead of JSON data, we're going to be sending on XML data. Uh, no, <laughs> it's the long answer to that. But that's just this sort of artifact here. Okay. So besides the funny name class, this is what's actually going to make the Ajax request for us. We'll do prepare. Uh, we'll prepare the request. Um, so we use this. We open it. Specify the HTTP method get. Now we specify the URL. This is going to be to um, my local web server. You would, you know, put in um, whatever sort of web server you're using. I'm hard coding it. It's Maybe not the best practice, um, <clears throat> but makes the example kind of maybe perhaps easier to follow. Uh, also, again, I'm putting all this code just straight in this index.html file. Again, not the best practice, but I just want you to be able to see it all in the context of the page. Anyhow, I've defined, prepared the request here. I specified the HTTP, HTTP method, get. So that's going to be used for retrieving information. And here's my uh, URL I'm requesting and the username that I'm using for the app. Again, this could be something we get back from like a login service, an authentication service, something like that. I've just, for this example, just hard coded it up here. <clears throat> so example user, so if I put it all together, I have this URL over here. Okay, now let's set the callback. Um, this um, is one of the more maybe annoying parts of this. <laughs> so what is this? I'm writing on ready state change and giving it a function. So that this XML HTTP request object is going to call whatever function set to the attribute on ready state change. As it makes a request, it's going to go through a series of states. One being, oh, we've we've made the request. Four meaning, you know, the request was accept or finished. We've gotten the data back. So we'll have to add this line in here. We say ready uh, state is four. This means um, uh, the request is finished. So when the, when the request is finished, update page. Neato. Um, again, recommend do uh, console.log of, there's a few things. So this 
it syntactically what's happening here is very sort of strange um, or maybe take you a little bit to get used to if you notice I'm using there's this you know keyword this so this is referring to this that XML HTTP request object by giving it this function, this on ready state change function, it's actually really a method. So I have access to the internal state of the XML HTTP request object. And yes, this is the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> so there's one field called ready state. So I'm checking that uh, for when this uh, request is done. The, whatever data is retrieved is going to be in another attribute called response text. So I'm going to log it right here. <clears throat> I'm also going to log uh, the status. So there, HTTP gives us a status code <clears throat> that will tell us if um, the request was successful or not. You know, you're already familiar, I'm sure, with one HTTP status. That's the 404 error, or, you know, page not found. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to then uh, so this, that's just logging. What I'm going to do is parse the response. So it's going to convert that JSON string into actual objects I can use in the code and then update to page. Uh, I'm going to do that last. I'm going to jump down to the third step of actually making the request <clears throat> just so we can see the data sort of fly back and forth. Um, so for, for this, um, yeah, yeah, it's really simple. You just do request.send. Woohoo. Oh. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. I was confused myself there. This, refresh this page. Um, <clears throat> do, do, do. Oh, I made a typo here. Um, so this is another, this is exactly why you want to <laughs> console.log everything. I got this 404 status. Uh, that's because I forgot this slash right there. So then I have a URL that exactly matches this with its nice little slash between API and example user. I left that off up here. So I'll just pretend like I meant to do that. I'll clear the console, make sure this page is saved, and refresh. Wow! Here's that data. You see the response string is response is just this string. It exactly matches all this. Um, yeah, it works. Oh, status 200. That means success. So you could use that status code. You know, it's a, usually a good idea to check it and say, oh, if it's 200, you know, go about updating the page. If it's 400, maybe you want to display uh, an error message somewhere. But let's get the data out now. So uh, I'm going to make a, uh, a response variable. So there's this built-in class called JSON. And I can just call this nice function called parse on this dot response text. So again, that's going to take this data, this string, that's this nicely formatted string, and make it into a JavaScript object. <clears throat> Oh, actually, why don't I do this? I'll, I'll say if, if the request is good, update page. So this is this is also a good idea. So I'll do this at status 200. That way it's not trying to just throw junk up on the page with whatever is in that response text variable. And then finally, I can do... Um, Oh, maybe let's not call this response. We're going to call this to-do list because that's what it is. It's converting the response text into a list of objects here. So now I can come down here and just write you know, plain old boring JavaScript and to-do list. And I will do this show to-do. And I have my to-do list with the i thing. And then I can get out to do text. So um, yeah, I'm getting out, this is each item out of the list, and then I'm just capturing again or accessing the text for it. And let's go over here, refresh the page, and see what happens. Woohoo, it worked. Um, 
yeah, so that's what I wanted to do. I retrieved this data and I threw it up here in, as list items. So again, it just does it on page load. I fire off the Ajax request. It, um, but I, I could say have a timer, like I said, or have some other event which goes and just fetches more data each time. Um, <clears throat> each time I add something or on or some other event. Anyways, that's kind of basic uh, Ajax with vanilla JavaScript using a REST API. Great, bye.